Dengue fever is an infectious disease caused by transmission of the dengue virus. One origin for the name is thought to come from a Kiswahili term, ki dinga pepo, meaning sudden cramp-like seizure caused by an evil spirit. Dengue is a single-stranded positive sense RNA virus of the Flavi virus family, with four subtypes transmitted by Aedes mosquitoes. This makes it an arbovirus, that is, an arthropod-born virus, similarly to Western Nile virus, yellow fever, Japanese encephalitis, and Zika virus. Interestingly, it can also be transmitted via blood products, thought to be the case in 37% of infections, as well as mucocutaneous exposure and needle sticks, taking 5 to 8 days on average from infection to symptoms. Up to 400 million infections are estimated to happen each year, although most are mild or asymptomatic, with the virus being endemic in over 100 countries worldwide, particularly in Latin America and Southeast Asia. Although not endemic in the United States or UK, there have been several thousand cases reported. The pathophysiology is thought to be linked to the host immune response, proliferation of memory T cells and pro-inflammatory cytokine production leads to vascular leakage, considered a hallmark of the more severe clinical syndromes of dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome. This seems to be linked to dysfunction of the endothelial glycocalyx layer, a glycoprotein layer on the luminal surface of the endothelium that helps maintain homeostasis. Loss of intravascular fluid can then lead to hypoperfusion and ultimately multi-organ failure. This can also happen as a result of direct viral damage in tissues, such as myocarditis, liver necrosis and encephalopathy. Dengue has three distinct phases. The first is the febrile phase, characterized by a high-grade fever lasting typically two to seven days. Fever is seen in 98% of cases. Other manifestations in this stage include headaches in 76%, malaise in 74%, retrobulbar pain, meaning pain behind the eyes, myalgia, which can be very severe, which is where dengue got the name breakbone fever, as the aches can be so severe they resemble bones breaking. There may also be nausea, diarrhea, and skin flushing. Next is the critical phase, which features plasma leakage, as well as potentially severe hemorrhage, shock, and organ dysfunction. This phase lasts typically 24 to 48 hours, with most people improving. Not all patients will pass to the critical phase, but warning signs that the patient is entering it include abdominal pain, fluid accumulation like ascites or edema, mucosal bleeding like epistaxis or gingival bleeding, lethargy, vomiting, hepatomegaly, and lab investigations showing thrombocytopenia and a raised hematocrit. The third phase is the convalescent phase, which is where the extravasated fluid is resorbed and the patient improves. There may be skin desquamation or peeling, and the flushing rash may improve, leaving islands of normal, paler skin. The World Health Organization classifies dengue into three clinical categories. Dengue without warning signs, also known as dengue fever, which roughly corresponds to the febrile phase and bypasses the critical phase and ends with the convalescent phase. Dengue with warning signs includes any of the warning signs we mentioned, where the patient may enter the critical phase. And third is severe dengue, also known as dengue hemorrhagic fever and or dengue shock syndrome. People with this enter into the critical phase and severe illness is more commonly present when there is a secondary infection with different serotypes. And it is thought that 90% of dengue hemorrhagic fever happens in children under the age of 5. Early diagnosis can be challenging, 
as the initial symptoms can resemble many other viral illnesses. A high index of suspicion is required, and travel history to endemic areas, especially within the last two weeks, should raise suspicion. We've mentioned some physical signs, but others include a positive tourniquet sign, meaning a development of petechiae when a blood pressure cuff is applied at between systolic and diastolic pressure and kept on for five minutes. Abdominal distension may represent ascites, and signs of circulatory collapse include tachycardia, prolonged capillary refill time, cold, clammy skin, and reduced urinary output. Lab investigations include a full blood count, looking for leukopenia and thrombocytopenia, which, when combined with skin flushing, is suggestive of dengue if the patient was recently in an endemic area. Hematocrit may rise due to dehydration, and liver function tests should include albumin, which is often low due to plasma leakage, as well as deranged enzymes with an AST to ALT ratio typically above 2. There are four types of diagnostic tests available for confirmation of dengue virus infection. First is virus isolation, which is not generally done as the time for confirmation is not clinically useful. Second is viral antigen detection, and third is viral nucleic acid detection. Both of these are more specific, with nucleic acid detection being more sensitive and specific, though these two tests are more expensive and less readily available than the fourth option, which is serology. This is indirect and is less specific, but is more readily available. It does also typically take five days of illness for antibodies to develop and therefore be detectable. A recently developed pan-dengue virus reverse transcription insulated isothermal PCR assay may provide a point of need assay in the future. Imaging can include an x-ray assessing for pleural effusion and ultrasound can be useful looking for ascites. There is no specific antiviral therapy for dengue presently. Treatment is focused on supportive care, the cornerstone of which is maintaining adequate hydration status. Depending on severity, this may range from encouraging oral intake and monitoring urine output, to intravenous fluid resuscitation, blood transfusion, and catheter use. Caution is needed as excess treatment can exacerbate symptoms of fluid extravasation, such as pulmonary edema. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories should be avoided due to the associated risk of bleeding. The clinical value of fresh frozen plasma, corticosteroids, intravenous immunoglobulins and antibiotics are controversial and more evidence is required.